Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day. I've been battling this sore throat literally uh, all day. I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better all day. It felt like razor blades were on my throat, but I, I did the whole honey, I did the whole tea, the lemon, all that good stuff. So hopefully I'll be 100% better. So uh, if you are brand new to the channel, please like, share, support. Uh, all that good stuff that comes along with our journey here. Again, we try to implement a, a no bias uh, free zone. Uh, only the facts, man, like uh, like uh, Dragnet, right? I'm dating myself, uh, but Dragnet said back in the days. Um, so I want to start a little bit different today, okay? Um, do you guys remember, I think it was like five, seven, more, had even won that, close about 10 years ago, Chrysler came out with a car and I believe it was called the Chrysler 300. You guys remember that? It looked from far away, like really, really far away. But if, if, if you looked like if you stopped at a light and you looked at two blocks, it kind of looked like a Bentley Flying Spur. Remember because of the because of the grill? And it, until it got really, really close, so you couldn't, you know, you you say to yourself, "Wow, I can't believe that this, this thing actually looks like the Bentley Flying Spur." And then as you realize when it got closer and you put the Chrysler 300 versus the Bentley Flying Spur, flying spur you, you kind of realize, well, it's a little bit different. And that's kind of how the market is, right? That's kind of how the market is right now. Um, I, I think the comparison uh, between, again, by the way, nothing against the, you know, the Chrysler 300 is what I kind of show the comparison. And um, if, if you look at how the market is right now, okay, uh, versus how we were in 2007, 2008, and 2009, I just want to give you a, a quick, uh, a quick kind of reflection, okay? Keep this in mind. The Qs were at fifty-five dollars, okay, at the, the middle of two thousand and seven. They got cut in half, literally cut in half, uh, for the next two years. That was a lot of damage, okay, a lot of damage. People lost their homes. People lost their jobs. People, a lot of people, unfortunately, lost their will to even live. That's how bad things got. The credit markets froze. You couldn't get a library card, let alone a credit card, okay. And it was absolutely touch and go every single day because the biggest uh, and the most prestigious institutions in the world closed down. You had Bear Stearns closing down. You had Merrill closing down. If it wasn't for Bank of America buying Merrill Lynch, they would have been gone as well. Can you imagine the Merrill Lynch bowl completely gone? And that's where we were. It was total hysterical, total hysteria, total panic. People didn't know exactly what was going to happen next. And we were literally day to day living our lives. Let's fast forward. Right. Let's fast forward to where we are uh, present day. And here's where we are. So we are in 2023. This latest financial crisis, OK, has lasted a total of nine days. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's still going on, but it's lasted nine days out of those nine days. The last five days, well, actually six days have been a tremendous rally off the lows on the NASDAQ 100, right? Absolutely huge rally in technology. And again, whether the, the reasoning is a potential rate cut, and we'll get to that in a second, I don't think that's gonna happen, uh, a potential rate cut or whatever the case may be, flight to safety. But the moral of the story is nothing says panic, financial crisis and turmoil is your money safe, right? As the QQQs only a dollar and a half away from the 2023 highs, okay? That is a major, major difference, guys. You cannot compare uh, the 2007 market crisis to kind of what we are now. And again, no offense, if anybody owns a car, it's like comparing the Chrysler 300 to a Bentley Flying Spur. It's just completely different things. They might look the same, right? They might even sound the same. They might even have a little bit of resemblance to each other, but it's a completely different animal. It's a completely different car, and we're in a completely different market. Because again, if this was 2007, I can guarantee you nobody would be talking the word, about the word breakout, longs, or anything to do with speculation money. We were basically hanging on to our lives, hoping to God that our, you know, our livelihood wasn't going to get frozen 
uh, during that time. And hopefully every single day was going to be a complete gift because every single day that the market total market capitulation didn't happen, that's, you know, the next possible day could actually be a little bit breathable. And eventually the 2009 saw a generational bottom. So, uh, you know, the, the idea and the whole conversation, I believe, uh, and again, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We could be having this conversation a week from now and you go, well, that, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that held up all day and your little, you know, little school. Absolutely. I, I'm well aware of that. But from, 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 from where we are and where we started with this whole uh, financial mess, it, it is really worlds apart. Um, I think it's completely different. And all those fear mongers, if you go, if you remember going back to two weeks ago, when I first made that video with SIVB, and the first thing I said was everybody calm down, right? Everybody calm down, everybody relax. We don't know what this is. Okay, maybe it gets worse, maybe it doesn't, but let the market kind of dictate. Here we are nine days later, and we're about to have a conversation of the bulls testing uh, the February 2nd highs in the next day or so. So absolutely remarkable, uh, remarkable resilient market. I feel like I've been saying that now uh, every single day. Uh, the bulls have been going absolutely nuts. Every sell-off has been bought. Uh, even the banks, uh, like we talked about in the last night's video, completely stopped, right? They just completely stopped pressing lower. FRC is up 50% one day, down 50% the other day. That's all great, right? That's all great. That's all fine. That's all dandy. But the overall market, again, is isolating all those individual banks, those mid-tier, smaller-tier banks into their own little ecosystem. And the market is continuing uh, to show incredible, just absolute incredible resilience uh, going forward. Tomorrow, right? We have a big day, or at least people sensationalize that big day in their heads. We have the March uh, the March uh, FOMC meeting, right? I, I think there's going to be a compromise, right? I don't think for a second, well, I don't think, but then again, I'm more on it, right? But I don't think there will be a rate cut tomorrow, okay? I, I think what's going to happen is, and a lot of people speculating there will be, I don't think so. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, again, I'm, I'm a moron, right? But the point is, I don't think there's going to be a rate cut tomorrow just because I think the market, because it's stabilized, I think because of the, the government did a, did a pretty good job kind of stabilizing the collateral damage, I think the market will probably have an leaving change, leaving rates unchanged, right? They're not going to raise them because they don't want to put any additional pressure on these smaller mid-tier banks. And I don't think they're going to cut them because the market has been so resilient that we're starting to go to go back. So I do believe, if I'm a betting man and I'm not, gun to my head, I think tomorrow they're either going to leave rates unchanged, okay, and and have language of, you know, let's play it by ear. We'll see how it is by the next uh, by the next Fed meeting. Or if they are going to raise, it's only going to be by 25 basis points. But, but again, a uh, puncher shot, I think they do leave uh, rates unchanged. If they do cut rates, uh, I will be surprised. I would not be shocked. There's nothing shocks me anymore. Uh, but I definitely will be uh, surprised. So again, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But again, from what I'm seeing and how the market is reacting, I think the compromise will be leaving rates unchanged for at least one more uh, one more month until the next uh, until the April uh, Fed meeting. We'll you know we'll see about that. Other than that, uh, the market continues to take the body blow. No matter what we, we we gap up, we go back down, we reclaim, we go back up, we sit around, we go back up. They try to fake it down, they squeeze, you know, they trap shorts, they go back up. And if they if you look at all the you know if you look at all the areas, and again I try to give uh, I try to give uh, all the traders who uh, kind of a thank you for watching these videos. I try to give you guys levels uh, every single day on the cues, right? If you guys remember uh, five days ago that two ninety four forties level got confirmed. That 298, 299 level got confirmed, right? The 209, the 309 level we talked about last night, right? Got confirmed. We closed at 3010 and change. So now the big level coming up macro-wise, and again, we don't know what the Fed's going to say, is going to be this 313.68 level, right? That is the highs from February the 2nd. And if you look at a lot of charts tonight that had really big runs, you'll notice their highs, their channel raw, uh, highs, uh, since the fifth, since September, have been on that September. Uh, it's been the fe February second and February third highs, and that's why it's correlating to a lot of charts, especially on the QQQ. So right down this level, guys, you got thirteen sixty eight, which is the macro channel 
uh, from Feb second. Uh, also, the bulls obviously tomorrow to get to that uh, to get to that uh, thirteen sixty eight level. I think the bulls going to need to reclaim uh, this three eleven built three eleven area and start building above. Uh, the last thing the bulls want to do is lose the bottom of the channel here, which is three hundred five. You can see it's the rising. Uh, orange line. That's the five-day moving average. Again, for all you guys who have been with me for a long time, you know the significance of the five-day. It's the shortest-term sentiment. And you, if you if you haven't been with me, you can clearly see why this five-day is super important, this orange line, because every single time it comes down to this level, right, it bounces. Came down to this level, bounce. Came down to this level, bounce. So the bulls are going to have to defend if, in case there's some bad news tomorrow, uh, this 305 level on the close. And the Bears, they're going to need to, you know, defend this 311 because the Bulls seize control out of 311. Uh, we're going to start going higher and test that February 2nd high of 313.68. So, you know, we are set up uh, for tomorrow. As far as individual stocks, uh, you know, Apple, we talked about this last night. Uh, again, perfect, perfect close. This is the highest formation. Uh, they, they ripped it at the open today. They took it red. They held the bottom of the range here on the 60-minute view, right? I'm sorry for these wicks, but e-signal just goes crazy with these wicks. They trapped shorts on the bottom of the 60-minute range, and the stock closed right at uh, right at 2023 highs. Um, you know, they, they're coming for the 160. They're coming for the 162.50 uh, weekly calls, pretty much nonstop here uh, the whole morning. So this thing looks higher uh, for tomorrow. Tesla, right? Tesla finally, finally woke up, right? Finally woke up. There wasn't a down tick. When I'm telling you, there wasn't a down tick on Tesla pretty much the whole day on this rising, uh, you know, rising 60 minute support. It's the truth. It just, it did absolutely uh, did not down tick for it, literally the whole day. Uh, buyers were coming in all, all day, all day for the 200 weeklies, for the 205 weeks, for next week's uh, 215 calls. So if it could start reclaiming today's channel, uh, for tomorrow, you know, there you, you know, you're looking at 201 followed by 205, uh, which is going to be this 150-day uh, moving average. So Tesla looks uh, really, uh, really good. Um, let's see what else I want to talk about. Uh, let's see what, what else I want to talk about for tomorrow. Uh, give me one sec. Oh, Amazon. Amazon looks really great. If you guys remember last time we talked about Amazon, Amazon reclaimed the 50-day moving average. We talked about this 9650s. It had this phenomenal, phenomenal move uh, into supply on the 316 highs. Look how close this thing is to taking down this whole channel here. Watch Amazon. They started coming for the 101 uh, weekly uh, weekly calls. Yesterday, they were coming for the 102s, 103s. So this announcement, if this FOMC is good and the bulls start ramming, watch the top of the channel here because if Amazon starts going, there is room all the way up to the 150-day moving average of uh, 104. Uh, NVIDIA had its uh, investors meeting today. Just like all investors meeting, they shoot it out of the cannon. They bring it down to red. They shoot it right back up. And you can see here now, back-to-back -back times, uh, NVIDIA got rejected uh, at this uh, at the top of the range here at 364. NVIDIA starts building above this 364. Uh, maybe this thing starts its next leg up as well. Um, and that's it. I mean, you could pretty much look at every tech stock. Uh, Roku looks good. Uh, TTD looks good, right? You know, all these things look really, really good. Again, if you go through the NASDAQ 100 charts, uh, you'll see there's a lot of really great setups uh, that are coming in for uh, coming in for uh, tomorrow's session. The question is, what is the Fed going to say? What is the language? What's going to be the kind of the forward guidance going into uh, the April meeting? Again, my gut feeling is we're either going to have rates left unchanged or a small 25 basis point cut, kind of a compromise to what we're seeing right now with our uh, present reality. So that's it, guys. Everybody have a great day, everybody. God bless you all. Everybody, again, just stay calm, stay rational. You know, the markets go up, the markets go down. Have a course of action, have a process that you can believe in, that you can rely on. So you're trading price action and data instead of opinion and fear-mongering, right? Guys, God bless. Hope everybody's doing well, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.